it. There's still time for it to be undone.
What do we do? What do we do? Stand up and fight back! When the planet we need is under attack! What do we do? Stand up and fight back! When the planet we need is under attack! What do we do? Stand up and fight back! When the water we drink is under attack! What do we do? Stand up and fight back! When the land we live on is under attack! What do we do? Stand up and fight back! When the air we breathe is under attack! What do we do? Stand up and fight back! the indigenous delegation doing a ceremony. Everybody welcome them. Hello, Ajibun, Ajituta, Imanaja. Hi, good evening. How are you feeling? Hermanos y hermanas del mundo, hijos e hijas de la madre tierra. Sisters and brothers of the world, children of Mother Earth. En este tiempo, el 21 de septiembre, en los Andes celebramos el tiempo del Quillarraim, el tiempo de la feminidad. Así que en este momento vamos a disponernos para poder saludar al interior de la Madre Tierra, saludar a los cuatro tiempos, a los cuatro espacios de la Madre Tierra. So today, the 21st of September, Quillarraui, we are celebrating the femininity of Mother Earth. So now we're going to look into ourselves and connect with Mother Earth. Vamos a alzar las manos. Let's rise up our hands. Al gran misterio, gran espíritu, al corazón del cielo, corazón de la tierra. To the big spirit, to the heart of Earth. De ahí traemos la fuerza, la fuerza y la sabiduría a nuestro corazón. Primero para sentir bien. Let's bring our strength and knowledge to our hearts to feel good. De la misma manera, llevamos a la cabeza para pensar bien. At the same time, let's bring it to our brain so we can think, uh, think uh, good. Asimismo, a nuestra boca para hablar bien. Same time, let's bring it to our mouth so we can speak correctly. Y así también a nuestras manos para hacer bien. Let's also bring it to our, to our hands so we can make correct things. Y así también a nuestros pies. Also to our feet. Para caminar bien. So we can walk well. Esto es la economía del buen vivir. Estar bien. No acabar con la madre tierra. Este modelo capitalista ya ha acabado como dos planetas. Pero no ha resuelto el hambre de los pobres en el mundo. Por lo que invito, hermanos y hermanas, a equilibrarnos entre lo que hacemos los humanos y la Madre Tierra. Sí. So, this is the economy of the well-being. The capitalist model has already finished two worlds, but they haven't helped the marginalized and frontline communities. Y quiero finalizar con un, un mensaje muy chiquito. La juventud. ¿Dónde está la juventud? Los taitas, los abuelos ya lucharon. Ahora nos tocan a nosotros, los jóvenes y los niños y las generaciones que vengan. Así que mucho depende de nosotros para salvar la madre tierra. No por la madre tierra, sino por nosotros, por esta generación y por los seres humanos que somos gregarios. Así que todos los que estamos dispuestos a ello vamos a ser criminalizados, como en este caso mi persona. Soy criminalizado. Tengo juicios en el Ecuador por defender la madre tierra. El presidente de la república y sectores económicos nos quieren ver en la cárcel. Pero nosotros no vamos a ir a la cárcel ni a la tumba. Vamos a seguir luchando en el mundo. Un abrazo a todos y todas. So my final
final words are for the youth. Where are the youth? Are you here? Yeah. Our grandparents have already fighted. Now it is our turn. The youth, the kids, and the future generations. The, the future depends on all of us. But us, that we are gonna fight, we're gonna be criminalized. Myself, I need to go to the trials because of the president of my government and the economical systems want me to go to jail. But I'm not gonna go to jail and we're gonna fight together. Finalizo diciendo, todos somos hermanos. Hermanos en la tierra. Usted tiene los huesos, tiene la carne, tiene el pelo. Ahí somos hermanos. Somos hermanos en el agua porque usted tiene la sangre. Somos hermanos en el viento, porque en nuestros pulmones está el aire. Somos hermanos en el fuego, porque tenemos energía en nuestra, en nuestra vida. Por lo tanto, nadie es más que nadie. Todos somos hermanos. Muy un día, Huarcanchi. Y un pachano. So, we are all brothers and sisters. We have the earth in our hair, in our body. We feel the same water in our blood. We are feeling the wind in our lungs. We feel the fire in the energy we have. So no one is more than anyone. We are all equal. We are all brothers and sisters. Viva la humanidad! Viva la humanidad! And now um, we are going to welcome uh, our shaman. Um, he came to accompany the delegation of uh, indigenous peoples present during the climate week in order to help with the spirit spirituality and help the indigenous to be still connected with the Mother Earth even though they are in New York. <laughs> Soy, me llamo Ricardo Saquim, un chamán shuar de la Amazonía Ecuatorial. My name is Ricardo Saquim, I'm a from the Shuar indigenous peoples from the Ecuador, Ecuadorian Amazon. Mi hermano mayor de ustedes. I feel like I'm your big brother. Porque sé respetar, los digo. Because I know how to respect all of you. Un solo mandamiento en estos tiempos estoy diciendo al mundo entero. I'm just saying to the whole world one mandate, just one mandate. Si no respetamos, destruimos nuestra vida, nuestro planeta. If we don't, if we don't have respect, we destroy our life, our mother earth. Para nosotros no es difícil ser cultura de respeto. For us it's not difficult to have a cultural of respect. No se necesita ningún for, ninguna fórmula para aprender y saber respetar. We don't need any formula to learn how to respect. Soy hijo es alumno de una verdadera universidad y no de especialidad. I am uh, a student of the true university and not a speciality. Soy una persona que nací para servir y no para destruir. I'm a person that was born to serve and not to destroy. Al contrario, construir. O to opposite, to build. Reconstruir. To rebuild. Nuestro planeta. Our, our planet. Está en crisis. It's in crisis. El hombre es responsable de todo esto. And the human being is the responsible of all of this. Os amo. I love you. A todos los hermanos. To all my brothers. A todos los seres vivos. To all the living organism. Estoy tan feliz verlos a todos los hermanos. Del mundo. It, make me, it makes me so happy to see all the brothers of the world here. 
soy una persona de conocimiento profundo que manejo los dos niveles. I am a person with a deep consciousness and I manage two levels. Esta dimensión y otra dimensión. This dimension and another dimension. Os deseo en este día y hasta siempre que haya paz, armonía y amor. I wish you today and forever peace, harmony and love. Desde aquí, desde hoy, empecemos a trabajar por bien de nosotros y por bien de nuestro planeta. From here, from today, let's start working for the good of ourselves and also the planet. Muchas gracias a todos y buena vida. Thank you very much. Have a good life. Hello everyone. Thank you for coming. We're taking to the streets today to demand that global leaders listen to youth and fight for climate justice. When I say climate, you say justice. Climate. Justice. Climate. Justice. declare a climate justice emergency. We need Adams to enforce local law 97. We need global leaders to endorse the advisory opinion. And we need international governments to stop ecocide. We're going to have we're going to have incredible activists speaking about these demands, and the program will be 30 minutes. So please stick with us. In order to sustain our movement, we need to lift up every voice and listen to each other. So listen for 30 minutes, and then you have the rest of your day to yourself. Strikes will tell you a lot. They will tell you to be scared, to be angry, to be hopeful and inspired all at once. This strike is meant to inspire you, but we also want to come. But we also want you to come away with something that you can do in your own life. Our amazing speaker Shiv will touch on this later. But in our Instagram bio, we have a link to sign a petition to tell Mayor Adams to enforce Local Law 97, which is a real action you can take that will make a difference in your own community. And please keep coming out to climate events. Thank you. So, first up speaking, we are lucky enough to have the chair of Stop Ecoside US, Julia Jackson and Kevin J. Patel, founder of One Up Action. And today is Kevin's 22nd birthday, so please give him an extra round of applause! Happy birthday, Kevin. Hi, my name is Julia Jackson. I'm the founder of climate solutions organization, Grounded.org and I'm the chair of U.S. Allies to Stop Ecocide. I'm no stranger to the, to the climate crisis. In 2019, I lost my home to the Kincaid fire and lost all my belongings. I've suffered from eco-anxiety, but the only thing that gives me hope is that we have all the solutions to the climate crisis. We have all of them here and now. It's not in carbon capturing technology, but it's in honoring Mother Earth. Um, Thank you so much, Fridays for Future, for partnering with Stop Ecocide International and making it one of the four demands that we stop ecocide. Ecocide literally means killing one's home. It's one of the biggest solutions to the climate crisis. Just today alone, as we're walking, we've deforested 115,000 acres just today. Stopping ecocide and getting it criminalized in the International Criminal Court as the fifth crime against peace is one of the biggest solutions to the climate crisis. Um, so I'm really grateful. We need all hands on deck. We need all of your support to spread the word on stopping ecocide. This is our only home. We don't need to go terraform Mars. We need to be better stewards of this Earth. Now I'm going to hand it over to my dear friend, founder of One Up Action, 
Um, Kevin Patel, thank you. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Thank you for the birthday wishes, by the way. Uh, thank you to Fridays for Future for calling out my birthday. My name is Kevin J. Patel. I'm from South Central Los Angeles, and I'm the founder of One Up Action International, devoted to finding and funding youth-led climate solutions. Also, um, I'm here at Climate Week because like you, I believe that a sustainable and just future is possible and within reach. I see glimpses of that future in communities around the world. Since you're all here, you must see it too. But I worry about that every day because how much life will be lost on that way to that future. What I worry about is that modern human civilization has been built on ecocide, deliberate and neglect destruction of our environment. Leaders of countries and corporations are now admitting that their practices and their systems are unsustainable. But this isn't just the complete truth. If it wasn't unsustainable, how could this have continued on and on for, uh, for so long? Let us be honest, ecocide is sustained and is still being sustained at the expense of innocent children and families, especially in BIPOC communities. Ecocide is sustained so long as the rest of the planet is destroyed. Ecocide is sustained so long as every community is turned into a frontline community. This is the giant we are all up against the giant that we must all slay, that has completely captivated and captured the entire world. In a way, we are all being held captive by this giant. Leaders of corporations may believe themselves to be free or powerful. However, they are perhaps the ones most deeply held captive, and their power only comes from destruction. How else can they acknowledge and identify that they have actively committed ecocide while refusing to shutter or reorganize their, com uh, their companies. This is a scary reality, but there is still hope. While we wait for ecocide to be recognized by the international courts, youth are implementing the solutions we need. Youth are leading the environmental movement. We are the ones who understand our communities. We have the knowledge to, we have the knowledge, we have the optimism necessary to progress the movement. That is why One Up Action is launching three new initiatives, two rooted in the finding and funding youth developing solu climate solutions, and one dev uh, devoted to empowering young people to engage with their political systems. Uh, this is why our work matters. We are creating a world where ecocide isn't an acceptable business expense. A world where youth on the front lines are empowered to help our communities and reimagine our futures. The most powerful and versatile tool in our arsenal is our voices today. All of you, collectively, I'm standing here and seeing the thousands of people who are here. You all have a voice. We all need to use our voices collectively, whatever business, career, whatever you do in your, in your daily, daily to day to day lives, you all have the power to make a difference. Use your voices, please so that we can implement Stop Ecocide, so that we can implement climate solutions and we can achieve climate justice that we all deserve. Thank you so much. Okay, so our next speaker is climate justice activist and founder of Plus One Vote, Sada Mare. My name is Saad Amer. I'm a climate activist and I work to get people out to vote. Can I teach you guys a new chant? Yeah. I said, can I teach you a new chant? Yeah. Kill our planet? No, they won't. We are gonna vote, vote, vote. Kill our planet? No, they won't. We are gonna vote, vote. Kill our planet? No, they won't. We are gonna My family 
family is from Pakistan. Right now, Pakistan is one third under water. Pakistan has contributed so little to the global climate crisis, and yet right now is bearing the absolute brunt of the climate impacts. My family, my friends abroad are seeing this crisis firsthand, but it's not just them. It is the people in Puerto Rico, in Bangladesh, all across this country right here. And yet again and again and again, we seem to consistently deny the reality of the climate crisis, especially when the climate crisis is impacting black and brown bodies. What do we do when black and brown people are under attack? Stand up fight back! What do we do when indigenous communities are under attack? Stand up fight back! What do we do when the LGBTQ are under attack? Stand up fight back! What do we do? Stand up fight back! What do we do? Stand up fight back! And right now, we are in the midst of an election season. The midterm elections are less than 50 days away. That's right. And the adults, they tell me, son, young people, they don't show up. They don't show out. Young people don't vote. And to that, I have to say, kill our planet. No, we won't. We are gonna. No, we won't. Kill our planet. No, we won't. We are gonna. No, we won't. These midterm elections will decide the balance of Congress. They will decide the balance of our Senate and of our House of Representatives. Over the last two years, we have consistently seen debate over debate, compromise over compromise. They tell us that is impossible. We cannot have such investment in our future. What are you talking about, Ecocide? Why should we care about environmental justice? And that is so beyond the scope of what our reality is. Tell me what democracy looks like. This is what democracy looks like. Show me what democracy looks like. This is what democracy looks like. And in these last few weeks, as we head into our midterm elections, I'm going to need the help of each and every one of you to help mobilize and organize and get out the vote. Can I ask you all, take out your phones for me. Take out your phones right now. Pull them out. Let's record a video message. Show them up. Come on, everybody. Raise your phones. Yes, everybody. Ready? Woo! We are less than 50 days until the midterm elections. We are going to organize and mobilize and vote. We are going to organize a record number of young people, of queer people, of people of color, all across this country, collectively, to show our power. Tell me what democracy looks like. This is what democracy looks like. Show me what democracy looks like. This is what democracy looks like. Kill our planet. We are gonna. We are gonna. We are gonna. My name is Saad Amer. Thank you. Hi everyone. Very happy to be here. My name is Joshua Mponsim. I'm from Ghana. I work for the United Nations here in New York as a climate specialist. Thank you. Here's the thing. I was here for the first time in 2019 and I saw the biggest strike ever right here in New York. So many people are demanding for one thing, climate action. And yet here we are, 2022, with even multiple problems, COVID pandemic, Ukraine-Russia war. We need to be fierce, we need to demand more, and we need our voices even louder more than ever. And that is why today, I am very happy to introduce to you the UN Secretary General's Envoy on Youth, who is here not just to strike like previous years, but to talk and convey her message to you as one people, one unity, demanding for one thing, climate action. Everyone, please welcome Ms. Jayatma Vikramayake. Currently in Pakistan, floods have claimed the lives of over 500 children. 3.4 million children need immediate life-saving support, but inflation is crippling the country's economy. 
we need to stop asking governments to make the world a safer place for future generations because it is not even safe for present generations. For the children in Pakistan, Puerto Rico, the owner of Africa, there is no shelter, no classrooms. They have the opposite, an increase in hunger, an increase in poverty, an increase in diseases. This is not acceptable. This is a violation of their fundamental human rights. This is not the life they deserve. This is not the life they deserve while fossil fuel companies continue to make money through polluting our planet. For the past five years, I've worked to bring more youth voices into the forefront of discussions like climate action, which are so crucial to the present and the future of their lives. But young people are constantly and intentionally being kept out of these discussions. In my role, I get to meet and work with incredible children and youth activists and advocates around the world, just like many of you here today. I know that many of you are aware of the context of the climate crisis and its impact, especially on the countries in the global south, especially those who are living in countries like mine, where the climate crisis is coupled with political and economic crises, resulting in cascading effects ranging from increasing poverty, hunger, and public health challenges, ultimately resulting in loss of life. We cannot allow this to go on. There have been too many talks, too many negotiations, and too many agreements made. There's the Paris Agreement, there's Agenda 2030. What more do we need? All we need is implementation. All we need is that our governments, our leaders, walk the talk and do what they promised us that they will do. Inaction is injustice and young people and children are losing their lives and their futures. So before I leave, I want you to join me in demanding accountability on three things to ensure climate justice. First, the hundred billion dollars promised by the developed countries in 2015 to support adaptation and resilience in developing countries. We need that hundred billion dollars right now. A commitment from developed countries, particularly the G20, who is meeting right now in Midtown, to end their fossil fuel addiction. <laughs> Lastly, demanding action and not sympathy. This week we have seen many heads of state, business and government leaders applauding and sympathizing with climate activists. Let's tell them we don't need their sympathy. We need you to listen and we need you to act. Applauses and nice speeches will not reduce carbon emissions. Shutting down coal plants will. Let's keep fighting. Okay, so our next speakers are co-founders of Polluters Cut Fossil Fuel University, Ayesha Siddiqui, founder of Re-Earth Initiative, climate justice activist, Shia Basgida, and climate justice activist, Sophia Kiani. Please give a warm welcome. Elena Walinga. I come from the Ecuadorian Amazon and I'm here behind me. I have all my friends um, and we decided to come up here together instead of individually because I've heard their stories so many times and because we share the same story many of us but also because we are so tired of having to repeat our stories and repeat our trauma over and over and over again. 
I ask myself, when is the last time I will have to say these words? When is it gonna be the last tear that I shed? Because I've been repeating the same words and so, has my, so have my friends for as long as I can remember and we're still saying and we're still asking for action and we're not seeing it. But we also decided to come up here together because we come from community and we'll build community and that's the only way to fight climate change. That's what those people inside there need to learn from indigenous people, that we build community and that's how we restore and maintain balance in nature. That's how we've been protecting the Amazon rainforest and all the other ecosystems for thousands and thousands of years. Back home, the Amazon in my country, Every day it's getting worse and worse and I could talk about all the numbers and statistics but this is something that we see with our own eyes every single day. How trees and sacred places are being cut down for oil and mining, logging and then our communities are left in poverty to maintain a lifestyle in some other place all I'm going back and this is sad I'm going back with less hope than I came with and you might say we should be optimistic it's impossible because they paint this beautiful picture of sustainability and ecological and green and green and green I don't know how many times I've heard the word green in New York this week but the oil and the mining, they're still drilling and mining in the Amazon and they're still extracting and destroying. We're only go going from an extractive system of fossil fuel to another extractive system that is called green. I want to give space to my friends, but we need to keep fighting because as we've seen with what happened in Pakistan, Pakistan is and will be our story if change does not happen. Thank you. Hello guys, um, my name is Aisha Siddiqua. I come from a tribal community in northern Pakistan. And I really need you to hear this, because I don't think we realize how bad it really is in my country. 33 million people have been displaced. That is more than the entire population of Australia. That is more than 90% of the population of Canada. That is three times the population of Portugal. It is the biggest disaster in Pakistan in over a century, and my country is only 76 years old to begin with. Among those millions displaced, 16 million are children. That is 16 million little lives. That is 16 million faces full of hope. 16 million nightmares. And when I question the world about its apathy, my inbox and mailbox filled up with people telling me they would care if we were not terrorists. And I had to bite my tongue. Because even though the rains came from the sky, the floods we're experiencing were caused by your greed here in the United States, all the presidents that are sitting in the General Assembly. Caused by your leader's addiction to oil here. Yeah. 
I bit my tongue and wrote this instead. It's called, To Hell With Your Sustainability, My People Are Dying. Inspired by Noor Hindi and Ravithif Ziada. Colonizers go to war with nature and call it a business opportunity. I tell you that even our dead have drowned in their graves and you ask me to be polite. You ask me not to blame and shame and remember the color of my skin, the sound of my tongue and my place in your world. You tell me to give you a little bit more benefit of the doubt, to angle my face in front of the camera and give you the perfect sound bite of ache and forgiveness. You take and take and take until we birth our babies into the same water as our dead. And even then, you gather like vultures and feed on our helplessness. In your charity, you make profit. I tell you that there has been a massacre and the land will never be the same. The soil will never grow the same. The hum of mosquitoes has changed the color of the sky. And the sickness of your creed will haunt you in every lifetime. And you tell me about a new UN proposition. Some politicians lie that you cradle between your mouth and your ear. The bridges you will make after the bombs. Aisha, you've got to be a little more practical. Aisha, smile so they know you are not dangerous. And still, 100 dead, 200 dead, 1,500 dead, and no UN resolution, no negotiation, no negotiation will bring them back to life. But lest you forget, the earth has a memory and all her beloveds that she keeps tucked in her landscapes have birthed guardians. They are standing behind me. You will have to answer to her children and your children and their children. And one day it will be your home, your family, your land. I hope and I pray you make the right decision. Pakistan is still underwater. It will take two to four months for that water to evaporate. There are dead bodies floating in that water. It is causing mass illnesses, humanitarian disaster of massive scale. This is my request to all the media personnel here. All of you who have connections, please donate. We need your assistance. Donate to Al Khidmat, that is A L K I D M A T dot org, and the Akhuat Foundation, that is A K H U A T. Thank you so much. and establishes a town by injustice. Who is going to pay for Pakistan? Who is going to pay for the lost islands of the Caribbean and Pacific? Who is going to pay for the destruction in Uganda? Who is going to pay for the communities who must flee the Bangladeshi coastline? Who is going to pay for the thousands of species that fall off of the science red list and into oblivion. How long shall the land mourn? How long shall our farms lay in ruins? How long shall the herbs of every field wither? How long shall the animals perish? How long shall people die? 
Are we to watch them die of thirst in the droughts or gasp for air in the floods? What is the state of the hearts of the world leaders who watch this happen and allow it to continue? Our leaders are lost and our planet is damaged. Loss and damage is happening right now. Loss and damage has been whispered about on the edges of past corps. It's time for leaders to put loss and damage at the center of the negotiations. And we need funding to help us deal with the damage that has already happened and the damage that we will not be able to avoid no matter how much mitigation and adaptation is put into place. It's time to acknowledge that there must be additional funding on top of what has been promised for mitigation and adaptation. And it's time for that funding to come in the form of grants and not loans, because loans will only add debt on top of already existing debt. You cannot adapt to losing your home. You cannot adapt to losing your culture. You cannot adapt to drowning. You cannot adapt to losing your family members. We don't want to just exist in a hundred years from now. We want to thrive. We deserve to thrive. If you care for your orchard, you will enjoy its fruit. If you honor your home, you will be honored. Pakistan is and will be our story. Thank you. It isn't fair. It isn't fair that I have to stand on this stage and I have to wipe tears off of my friends' faces because of how scared they are. Because of how scared young people are that our politicians refuse to take action. Every day, the science becomes more and more clear that we're running out of time. What future are we studying for? Why are we letting our generation down? The IPCC report made it very, very clear. We need to end all new fossil fuel development and we need to end it right now. We can't keep coming up here. We can't keep saying the same things. Why do you think we all came here together? Because we're tired. We're tired of getting on stage and crying for you all to listen to what we have to say. I'm done talking. The time for action is now. We're done crying. We're done sharing our stories. It's time for you all, decision makers, governments, politicians, it's time for you to listen and it's time for you to take action. A recurrent thing is that we keep being vulnerable in order for people to pay attention to us. Imagine what it's like to shed every piece of you so that somebody can look at you in the eyes and have some piece of empathy or some piece of concern. But what mostly happens is that they see us and they see us as marketable and for their next business model. I'm going to share something with you that is very deep and I hope that some of you will understand. 400 million years ago, plankton in the ocean started to settle. The right temperature, the right pressure turned it into oil. On land